What's up, guys? It's your girl, Alyssa D with the new Star 94, The Rhythm of Atlanta. And if you love film festivals, we've got something amazing happening right in our backyard at Colony Square. I'm here with veteran TV and film development executive and producer, Nichelle Protho, to talk about her directorial debut at the Bronze Lens Festival. Joining Nichelle today is also two executive producers who helped her make her vision a reality, and that's Joseph Floyd and Terry Thompson. Um, and I want to jump in and just quickly talk about what the Bronze Lens Film Festival is. And of course, if you guys think I'm missing something, you can correct me and let me know what's up. But the um, Bronze Lens Film Festival is pretty unique because it's a nonprofit organization founded in 2009 um, really with the goal and the idea of making Atlanta a mecca for film for people of color. And I think it's just such an amazing idea and it really is pushing especially in entertainment today it's pushing the narrative of people of color that we get the right to tell our stories and be in the media and share what's happening. Um, so did I miss anything. <laughs> I think that's perfect. I mean, the reason that we entered the Bronzeland Film Festival is because they care not only about Black film, but they care about film that where the stories come from the South, where they come from this area of the country. And I think that's really important, too, because there are many stories here that need to be archived that are not necessarily at the front of the list when you think of, like, film and Hollywood films in particular. So they're not just drawn to big Hollywood films. They're, they're drawn to films from all around the world, but they never forget where they come from, which is right here in the state of Georgia. Absolutely. And Nichelle, I want to go ahead and also let's talk about um, your film, The Two Classes of 1968. And I just want to say, like, you know, without any spoilers, I went through and kind of read a little bit of the synopsis of the film. Um, what is this film about for the rest of us to watch? What is it about? You know, people, of course, want to know what the film is about. But when I think about it, there are always several different things that it's about to me. There are different things that really appeal to me and different things that I was interested in exploring. But at the heart of it, it's about a close-knit group of Black students at a quaint Catholic school in a small Black neighborhood in the 60s, run by a group of really loving and strict and fun and smart and eccentric nuns. And so that really is like the heart of it. But then it's, of course, also an integration story, a school integration story about how this group of kids had to grow up real fast when they became agents of social change, when their high school was closed and they were forced to go to or or pushed or nudged to go to an all white elite Catholic school on the hill. That's the other part of the story. Incredible, incredible. And I know um, just from reading a little bit about you, critical race theory is super important. Aside from educating people on what this is, what are some other messages people can take away from this film when they're watching it? Know your history. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, um, that there are many different integration stories. This is just one. And so when people hear that this is an integration story, they may say, well, I've seen those. This is different. This is uh, from the lens of, you know, uh, a group of kids who went to Catholic school and how the Catholic church, you know, created 13,000 or so Catholic schools in uh, the 20th century. And many of those schools were in Black neighborhoods and how that transformed the educational um, future of many of those students and how those students were able to propel themselves to major universities and institutions and careers. So these are things that people, a lot of people don't know. And I think it's really important that young people um, and that all people are aware of this story. Um, other, if we don't tell this story, it'll be forgotten. And so it was really important that we we put this story together. And Terry and Joseph came to me uh, a few years ago and they were talking about their their history. This is their living history. Right. And I was surprised. I had grown up with uh, around them as a child. They're friends of the family. 
And uh, I didn't know this history. And so when they shared it with me, I felt like this is absolutely a story that could be told. And they were asking for assistance to tell the story. And just over many conversations and sushi and <laughs> and all those kinds of things, um, we decided let's do this together. And that's how I came on board. I think one of the things is that when we started out, I think our vision was not as big um, or our potential was not as big as we necessarily thought. It, it's you know, Ours may have been just a history and outlining it, but especially with today's environment, this film, going back, look, looking at it and seeing the interviews, the interviews with my friends and classmates, this is such a, uh, a tool to use as a stepping off point for discussion for race today. So it's not just something that's static in a box. This, this is a great, great um, resource uh, to be used uh, to sit down and, and, and talk, even, even with some of my other majority friends. If they saw when they see it, it will promote lots of frank discussion. Incredible. That's incredible. I want to ask, you know, this is both yours and Terry's story. How did it feel seeing the final product? Like you put all this work and energy in, you know, how did it feel seeing, you know, what, like your life, your story in front of you? How did that feel? I'm glad you asked that. Because in the beginning, I just wanted our history to be recorded. I thought we were losing it because I had returned home at a, during Christmas and we had a reunion during that time. And someone at the, in the classroom or in that room was saying that they were the first class that had come through Aquinas. And I'm saying, well, that's not exactly accurate. <laughs> so maybe we need to inform people. And I was thinking just, you know, scrolls, writing, leaving in libraries, out, all different individual stories. When I saw the final product, I learned myself so much. You know, what we went through during that time. I knew, of course, my own story, but I didn't know it from a perspective of being older and looking back on it and knowing wh why I was in the place I was as an older person. And I understood now by hearing the story from my colleagues was, well, we learned this when we were younger. We, were, we built on it from the beginning. And here we are now as adults and purposeful mm -hmm. people in life. Absolutely. That's so beautiful. And it's, it's so amazing to hear. And I think we as people tend to forget that while to us, it's our everyday lives, we forget that down the road or looking back, we're like, wow, that was such a big thing or such a big moment or like, it's so crazy how much times have changed. So it's so incredible just to be able to reminisce on things like that. And, you know, tell people the story of how things were and, you know, how we've changed. I do want to ask, or I do want to bring up now, you guys work with a pretty special co-writer, and I want to, you know, kind of tap into that creative process and on the production side of things. How was working with your co-writer in um, making this vision a reality? Oh, it was, it was wonderful. You know, the, the co-writer is Monice Mitchell Sims, and she's been a friend for a long time, a writer in Hollywood for a long time. And she had just come off a BET movie and she was working on a, a feature screenplay. And I was working on this and I said, you know, this, you know, I was juggling multiple projects and I said, I really need someone to assist me with this. And she had written this book that I love from years ago. It's called uh, Address, colon, House of Corrections. And it was based on her own family's history in Detroit. Uh, they, they had immigrated to Detroit from the South in, in the 50s and 60s. And I thought she had done such a beautiful job of telling her story. I felt like she could really assist in telling our story. And, uh, and it was one of the best decisions I made in terms of uh, crew, you know, members on this. And, and I couldn't have done it without her. She was 
absolutely fantastic. Working together, we were in different states at the time. I was in Georgia. She was in California. We would send, uh, you know, scripts back and forth together. You know, we would redline material back and forth using Google Drive. I mean, thank God for all the technology we have today. It's really easy to work with anyone, really anywhere around the world. So um, it was really, it was really a breeze. Incredible. I do have kind of a little bit of a random question. Um, what would you say is kind of what makes something a movie versus what makes something a film? Ha! That is a random question. Okay, didn't expect that one. Um, <laughs> well, for me, a movie is fun and entertaining. It, it's not necessarily good. It's not necessarily, you know, kind of a uh, academically or scholastically, you know, um, you know, brilliant, right? It's, it, it's definitely entertaining, potentially, right? Whereas a film to me requires, you know, some real thought, uh, real development. You didn't write it over the weekend and then go shoot it, you know? Um, films oftentimes to me are not necessarily high concept stories, whereas movies a lot of times can be high concept stories. You, you can describe them in one sentence, you know? Um, so like uh, Schindler's List, that's a film, right? But a lottery ticket, that's a movie. <laughs> I just picked some random films to, to use, but, you know, um, that's how I explain. Does that, does that track? Yeah, you? no. And of course, and I, the only reason I bring it up is just because, you know, you want to make, I want to make sure that, you know, when people are coming, they understand, you know, it's not just about the, hey, let's go to the movie, get some popcorn and socialize. Like, this is really an experience that's going to be enriching your mind and your heart and it's not just about the entertainment and so that's why I wanted to kind of ask like you know what what makes a movie a movie and a film a film yeah. and more so me being a movie goer as well I'm like you know when I was putting together my questions I'm like should I use the word movie or should I use the word film so I was like let me yeah. stick with film but I'm definitely gonna ask this question <laughs> well hey no offense to Marvel films I absolutely love them but those are movies to me uh although black panther was definitely a film see like every once in a while they hit it right out the park and it's like brilliant and fun and entertaining yeah uh, i think that documentary films in general are films i think very rarely do you find a documentarian who wants to make a movie most documentarians are really interested in delving deep into their subject matter so they're going to deliver you a film that's my opinion I, I i think i can't think of a documentary film that i would just call a movie not off the top of my head right right absolutely now i want to go over just some um kind of agenda list here make sure we touch on everything now um Two Classes of 1968 is going to be debuting on August 26th. That's this Friday. Um, so I don't want you guys to miss out. Again, it's right here in downtown Atlanta at Colony Square um, at IPIC. It's so beautiful there. If you haven't been, now is the time to go. Like this is the absolute perfect, 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 perfect opportunity to go. And I want to go ahead and just ask Nichelle, what else can we expect from you in the near future? Yeah, and I also want to add that it's at 11 a.m. on Friday in theater number three, and there may be a few tickets left, so definitely go to bronsons.com and, and check it out. Um, the film was also narrated by Hill Harper. I mean, who doesn't love Hill Harper? Hill Harper is amazing. <laughs> um, and he does a wonderful job. He really, really does. So we're really fortunate to have him. Uh, projects down the line. Well, I'm vice president, senior vice president of production and development for a production company called Loud Sis Productions out of Los Angeles. And currently our CEO and founder and showrunner has just completed production on the Best Man Peacock series, which comes out December 22nd. So we're really excited about that. Wrapping up post-production right now. Uh, she wrote that along with uh, Malcolm D. Lee. They show ran, executive produced that together. And, um, and the whole cast is back. So it's gonna be a phenomenal treat for everyone on this holiday. Awesome, awesome. Of course, I've got to ask, how can everyone keep in touch with all three of you and all of the amazing work you guys do? 
you can keep in touch with me on Instagram at Nichelle Protho. I'm really easy to find on Instagram. And uh, Joseph and Terry? You can reach me through Nichelle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you can also check it's, us out on, on, on uh, social media I, through two yeah. classes of 1968. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Yeah. Incredible. And, uh, you know, just one last thing. What would you say is one thing you want the viewers to definitely look forward to when they see your film? To look forward to, um, I think just the, the relationship, the, the warm relationship that this group of African-American students had with the nuns that were their teachers. This is a group of nuns, Franciscan nuns specifically, that are quite unique to a lot of the other nuns um, that are out there. And, um, and I don't know that enough of a spotlight has been placed on them. So I think that's something to look out for. Also, Ambassador Andrew Young uh, is in the film and he dropped some really wonderful knowledge, historical knowledge that really contextualizes this story in a beautiful way. Incredible, incredible. As always, I want to thank everyone for joining me today and hanging out with me. And guys, don't forget to download the free Odyssey app today and follow Star 94 on all social media at Star 94 Atlanta. And of course, you can stay up to date with me, your girl Alyssa D, on all social media at it's me underscore Alyssa D. And you can catch all of my exclusive interviews just like this one on my YouTube channel. I'll link it down below so you guys can see it. And thank you everyone for joining me today. And I hope hope I can snag a ticket and be able to catch the film on Friday. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll keep one for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, awesome. thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful yeah. day. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. You too. Bye. Goodbye.